Okay, so in the first video, we looked at how to install Chromis POS. And if you don't know what Chromis is, it's uh, the world's best free chat GPT recommended point of sale service that you can use in your small business restaurants and perhaps even in bigger uh, businesses. It's what we recommend and it's what we're using. So uh, this is what um, we, we did. We went through in the first um, uh, this is a series of videos, tutorials basically taking you through um, ChatGPT. Uh, reminder, I don't work for, um, uh, not ChatGPT, Chromis. I don't work for Chromis. I'm not being paid for this. I'm doing this to help those who are where I was a couple of months ago because it's very easy to install it, look at it once, and then just move on, which would be a serious mistake because it's a true diamond, but it looks as rough as a diamond looks when you pick it up and you not recognize how valuable it is. So stick around and let's see how this goes. So the next um, thing we're going to do is just come. We installed ChatGPT previously and we got um, all these guys uh, installed. These are the different uh, components. This video, I look at these very components to see what they do. It's, hopefully it's going to be a short one. Uh, the first is the main application. Remember that after installing, you have to click on the database, watch the first video for a couple of things that are super important. And this is the main application, which we'll be dwelling on quite a bit. So uh, we here we'll just have a look at it. See, we have only three users, administrator, employee, manager. We have the Chromis administration. Chromis administration is where we do the bulk of the work that we do in the back end. Um, a lot of the work uh, that uh, is done on any application involves setting it up and if you set it up, set it up correctly it will really serve you when uh, you log on for the very first time none of those users have passwords but later on you can create a password and therefore we're just going to go in right away and log in without a password now i'll start with this you, you have your menu up here i like that this is for a restaurant so this is actually um, an intentional pun, not intent. Okay, it's intended. Okay, so under file, this is your first menu. You can change the password and, and exit the password. So you can act and exit the application. So this is where you can create a new password if you had to. Under inventory, you will have uh, five items. Attributes. Attributes, uh, when you have created your products and your recipes, then you could have attributes, something like, say, for example, you're talking about steak, then you can say rare, medium done and so on and then maybe uh, with sugar without sugar uh, black you know those kinds of things those are attributes that will give different foods auxiliary items are things that go together so for example uh, if you were to purchase uh, let's say uh, chicken then it goes with fries automatically and therefore um, which is different from buying fries by themselves then you'd buy uh, chicken with fries as an auxiliary item then categories basically all the foods that you create would be under categories uh, products as well will be uh, let's say whatever it is that you're selling but there's a twist here so hang around because i discovered a very important thing that we can and should do in terms of how we create our food i don't recommend that the food you sell you make it as a product unless it doesn't require different ingredients say for example if you're selling a, a soda for example a coca-cola 300 ml soda then that can be a product but if you're selling that chromis can deduct the exact amount of milk you use for your cup of tea plus the amount of sugar plus every single component and one give you its cost and secondly deduct your stock so you can actually achieve two very important things know your cost precisely and number two uh, track your stock if you'll create this the way i'm going to show you as you go along the next uh, menu is a stock management and here you'll have your orders basically these are orders you're making to the suppliers not orders from clients this is uh, orders to suppliers you can make your suppliers your stock diary and stock taking then here is where you uh, determine your users and you can do employee presence management your employees, employees can clock in and clock out you can do user roles uh in for the instance um that we looked at you had an administrator you had a manager and you had an employee in fact you can create as many roles as you want and they have different uh can i say you can give them different uh, rights to the system maybe one person can see a certain type of a report another user role cannot see another type of a report maybe someone is able to 
uh, access the till somebody else can only take an order and so on uh, one person may see everything and then the actual users you have on the ground you'll be able to see them under this customers again you can create your customers and under customers i'll click on it actually and not only can you create them you can uh, give them the specific details give them a credit limit you can let them know the current credit is uh, take their contact details give them cards take an image check their transaction history and there's even a loyalty program that you're able to use under users so um the other thing that you want to see these these, these are your customers uh under maintenance you have company details basically uh, set up what's your company what does it look like flows how many floors do you have in your restaurant is it first floor second floor third floor there may be different spaces and in fact there's a way you can use this to make up for a deficit that i saw somewhere because at the setup of chrome is that every table uh, is considered as one and therefore if you have uh, several people who are not together then you may run into some difficulty because uh, you you only select a table so either you create different clients at different tables or we're going to create floors tables as floors and then we can actually lay out uh, clients uh, along those floors and locations again these are uh, you can also create this as well and then system resources these are the things that you're using like images Maybe you have um, an existing stock list or items you have or items that you sell you can actually import that into chromis using this particular tool as a csv file i believe and even as an excel tool you can create a product price scheduler you can uh, reset your pickup counter so that is from number one to number initialize stock take accounting and you can learn a little bit more about chromis pos and let's look at that just now we are database local host database name chromis tutorials java version uh, vendor windows 11 memory use total memory and so on believe it or not this is the first time that i've opened the bot button so that is chromis administrator we'll look at this a little bit more um, again one of the things that you may find a bit frustrating when you install it is that you don't have immediately a window to sort of minimize you don't have those icons up there and there's a good reason for that because you don't want your employees being able to access uh, the computer that you've created other than for work situations and so you can just uh, press the windows icon and up to maximize or down to minimize it so just remember that because you may use that a lot uh, during the main applications that you have installed so we'll be looking at this administration uh, panel a little bit more in detail the second uh, part we're going to look at is the chrome database creator we already installed this earlier and Chromis Database Creator is a tool that um, you, you need one to create your first database altogether. And the second thing you may need from this database is uh, to um, restore a database so that uh, if you have a database, okay, you'll be sort of saving or exporting your database every so often so that in case something happens and you lose your data then you can actually restore from somewhere else you'll notice one of the most frustrating things when you start out is that your database is completely empty and you have to create almost every single item yeah you have quite a bit of work you may have to employ guys to just do data entry uh, but once you've installed all that then it's super easy unless to um, uh, back up your database and once you've backed it up then you can actually go ahead and install it i have examples here that i'll show you later we'll actually be able to in addition you can change this uh, local host to the ip address of your actual server then you can then access if you're in the same network a different database and you can actually have this set up in different um, areas then um what else you can um, yeah, test the connection. This one is pretty straightforward. It will probably, this one will definitely connect, successfully connected and so on. So that's the database creator. We'll also come back to it a little bit later because that's part of the tutorial. Now, the next item you want to look at is, and it's an important one, is Chromis terminal configuration. And the terminal configuration is um, part of Chromis that allows you to determine where you'll be doing most of the things that you're doing. For example, um, printing. So this is our database, uh, uh, you know, um, configuration. What database are we using? Uh, we can test that connection. I think this will also work because this everything is quite uh, is working quite 
quite well. Here under terminal configuration, you can make a decision whether you are doing a standard kind of a point of sale system or you are doing a restaurant kind of a point of sale system. And in this instance and for this tutorial, we'll be working with restaurants. Then uh, you can determine the kind of stores you're using. For this instance, you just maintain the main store. And here you can enable auto log off and determine how long you it will take for you to log off somebody. So let us give that in seconds, maybe 180 seconds, which is three minutes if it's not used. So receipt number prefix, you can give your receipt a particular prefix number depending on your restaurant. And in this case, we do Chromis YouTube tutorial and that becomes the prefix that goes into every receipt that will then be printed from Chrome. So that's the first thing that you want to do in terminal, terminal configuration. The second item you want to create and probably depends on if there's a unique thing that you have to do with your receipts, a particular number, <coughs> go ahead and enter that here. The next thing that you want to do is to set up your printers and depending on where you're printing to, you then go ahead and configure your printer and there are different options. You can either display to a screen or use a printer or uh, there's one last item I can't quite remember I'll just leave it undefined in this case uh, I'm selecting a printer but under printers yes this is what I wanted to show you can either use an existing printer to which you can print or you can even print to Microsoft PDF which is basically an emulation you just have uh, you know can I say um, sort of um, PDF documents and this is actually the option that I'm going to choose right now so um, you can that's your receipt printer so there are different types of printers you are configuring the receipt printer kitchen printer because the way promise works is you have the option of placing the order printing it out in the kitchen uh, you don't have to the waiter doesn't have to go there they can just pick it out list the table who has ordered and the cooks or chefs just go ahead and prepare what is required then you can have a second kitchen printer you can have a backward printer or I'm sorry back printer not backward printer the back printer then you can have a customer display as well, which you can configure. If you have that with you, then you just attach it and then point, use this to point to that particular printer as it is exactly. It can be a dual screen, can be a window and so on and so forth. So all these are possible options. And then you go ahead and define that. If you have scales, you can configure those as well. Are quite important. And if you have a scanner as well, and you can actually enable the webcam in this place if that is something that you're using. So quite powerful, uh, a tool that you'll probably use a lot. I don't have a bar barcode scanner, but if you have that, then you can go ahead and configure it here. It works like a charm. Great, so we do we save the configurations. Uh, let's go ahead and save that, okay. And the thing about Chrome is it, it, it won't allow you to move on to the next stage if you haven't saved anything. So you looked at the administration panel, you looked at the main uh, application, uh, Chrome is configuration database creator. Migration tool will not touch at all this time. Let me just open this and be sure that I'm not leaving anything major out of this uh, system. Yes, and the <coughs> this is an important one, uh, but it's more to the look and feel and a couple of other components as well. So, um, I'll probably leave this general um, as it is, uh, but to give you an idea, let's change to graphite and uh, you'll see the impact on the other side. Okay, uh, the settings, uh, your time, your date, um, your system, you can decide how you're going to have your currency uh, reported depending on what you choose. Uh, you can decide to have uh, enter your country as it is. I'm in Kenyan right now, so I will definitely choose my country. I did do this setup many a long time ago. It's probably the easiest of the things you're doing. And uh, can I do this? No, I can't. Why is Russia, Ukraine coming out as Russia? Okay, I'm not sure why that's happening. But let's see, Kenya, oh yeah. Country, yeah, interesting. It has all this. These are Kenyan languages. Let's choose Swahili Kenya. Okay, so uh, payment method. We can uh, magnet card reader. You can define that. Payment gateway. Define that. Enable handling fees and so on. Test the mode. These are all quite important and they do exist. You can use all of this. Then you have. Um, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. 
I have to do something. Sorry, guys, very briefly. Yeah, the thing I'm trying to avoid, I don't think I'll be successful in avoiding it, but hopefully, uh, yeah. So login skills, screen, style screen, enable the new style login screen, and auto log off, enable that. And if you do that, then you have all these options. Log off after you sell, log off after sending to the kitchen, in restaurant mode, return to tables. Oh, this is actually quite interesting. Let me see. Yeah, that's really quite interesting. Let me go ahead and do that. Log off after printing, you make a decision on all of this. Then general, sort category by order number, uh, automatically hide payments, text overlay, update price from the edit, enable, uh, you know, enable maximum change, consolidate screens, use, use icons on payment screen, allow deletion of sent items. This, this is quite, don't allow that use uh, the keypad uh, button you know those kinds of things you're able to create and you're able to use um, your system appropriately screen location um, enable screen drag on start screen and tax exemption allow tax exempt customers to be uh, sorry what custom customers to be configured i think there's a typing error guys john and team just have a look i think this was meant to be customers and allow tax exempt customers to be configured <clears throat> these are things you're able to set up so button setup again uh this is look and feel ticket setup receipt number minimum length and i think actually found some this is a solution i really need for the actual system because it's a bit a bit long and then length of uh, ticket number always print receipt <coughs> you can turn that on or off print receipt prompt auto close in seconds service charge uh, and so on uh, these are all set up restaurant orders uh, you may have a different um, you know basically you'll go through this and figure it out as you go along uh, these are the different styles you can create either this or this this is what i'm used to this is what we'll be using most of the time but this is also an option and you can decide what is important for you and you also have card set up and you can create loyalty uh, here under loyalty, you can create endpoints and stuff. Yeah, so that is a brief run through of the different areas that we will be looking at um, over the course of this tutorial series. Again, if I haven't shown you what we are looking at in the Chrome tutorials, then we are at number two now, looking at the Chrome is POS elements, but we'll definitely go through uh, all the others. In the next video, we're going, to looking at, we're going to be looking at creating users, user categories, and reports and rights. Uh, there'll be many more coming up, guys. So I hope that uh, you're finding this useful. As always, if you have any questions, please put it in the comments. We'll try and answer that. And if there are ways you can improve on this, then go ahead and 